Hey, thanks for joining me. Come on, let's draw a goths. So I'm going to draw a goth. And while I do, I thought we could talk about friends and toxic friends. So this week's goth is my good friend, Michael Slack. Michael is an amazing children's book illustrator and gallery artist as well. I've put some links to his work down below. Definitely check him out. Anyway, Michael sent me this picture of himself when he was like 17 and I didn't know him back then. So it threw me off, you know, to see him with hair. Okay, so have you ever had to, you know, hit the reset button on your group of friends? Are you thinking about maybe unfriending someone IRL? There's been a few times in my life where I had to pull away from my dudes that I was hanging out with. Starting in junior high on into my early 20s, I hung out with this gang of guys, a squad, a crew, and these guys all lived in a different town from me. Well, whenever we'd get together, it was all about like mocking and like the power hierarchy. Who's going to be the butt? You, know, you just wanted to avoid being the butt of all the jokes. It was relentless and it was straight up mean a lot of the time. I mean, I'm fine with being roasted and I enjoy giving people a hard time when I'm friends with them, but you also need to be able to have friendly, supportive times, you know, actually be friends too. You can't just mock each other all the time. Well, I started seeing my relationship with these guys in a new light as I got into my early 20s and I was living with a couple of them. And one day, the battery in my old Mercury Cougar had died. It was not retaining a charge and I needed somebody to give me a ride to go pick up a new battery. And the apartment was full of, I don't know, five of them. And nobody could pull themselves away from their D&D &D game to get up and, and take me to the auto parts place. Well, you just get responses like, man, oh man, my, my car doesn't work. I should have, I should have maintained it. Oh man, man. That's what they'd say, you know. <laughs> I didn't think to call a taxi because I was young and didn't know anybody else in town. So I ended up just uh, roller skating, like a three, three mile trip on a hot summer's day to the auto parts place. Then having to roller skate back, holding a 30 pound car battery and obviously fight off the mob of young women who were chasing after me in that situation. Well, I think it was around then that things started to click for me that maybe these guys weren't all that great of friends after all. And it wasn't long after that I moved out and just kind of lost contact with all of them. And these days, you know, I do have a crew and I feel good about it. It starts with my wife and my son. And then I have, you know, six guys. They don't even know each other, but I can call any of them at any time and they'll listen to me and I'll listen to them and we can give each other advice and it's very supportive and we might even give each other a hard time. But here's the thing, uh, Amanda, my wife, you know, she still gets phone calls from her friends who are a little younger, maybe uh, her, her younger sisters, and they might be struggling with similar stories, you know, of abusive, toxic friends. When they do and I get to hear the story, I can't help but picture like, what if Michael Slack did that? What if Michael Slack called us and demanded that I buy matching outfits so that we can all go have a birthday party for him in Las Vegas and walk around in our matching outfits. And if I bring up that that's kind of expensive and I don't really have that kind of money right now, he would like lash out and, and say that I'm a horrible friend, you know? I just, I love picturing that because it's like, it's so not him. And I understand that you don't know Michael Slack and it's not that funny for you. So here's the question for you. Do you have friends who are like this, who are so not flaky, so even tempered, so not demanding that, that to picture them acting that way, to be abusive toward you like that is laughable. It's like a joke. If it's not laughable, then I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm just a dude drawing goths. I don't know, but 
just something to think about. To tell the truth though, it wouldn't be bad to kind of, you know, get some matching jackets that me and my friends could wear. Again, they don't actually know each other, so I don't know how that would really, nobody would even know that they match, but I'd know. What could be embroidered on the back of our, our jackets? The dad jokes? If you have any suggestions, put them in the comments below. And again, please do the YouTube stuff like the bells and the subscribes and let me know if I should keep making these at all. I'll keep making them. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.